Three, two, one. Racing World is presented by Race Control Magazine. Well, hi everyone. Welcome to another edition of Racing World, the podcast, uh, looking at all things motorsport as we do. Well, I'm by my lonesome this week. It appears that no one wants to play, as we say. But the boys will all be back soon, and I'll be doing uh, some more shows with Alistair Wooten in the coming weeks as well. We've got a few things in mind. Uh, as we mentioned in last week's show, massive week for the Motorsport New Zealand Elite Academy. As trustees, we interviewed 27 uh, applicants for this year's lineup to go to Otago in July, and uh, we'll have the announcement of those later in the month when they're announced at the Motorsport New Zealand Awards as well. Uh, all eight people uh, will be very pleased, I think, to be attending the camp, and we look forward to having them there as, as trustees. It's a very big thing for us. But starting the show off right now, we turn our attentions to St. Petersburg and uh, talking about Motorsport uh, Elite Academy graduates, the three that are up there at the moment in the Road to Indy series, Hunter McElroy, Peter Vodonovich, and Billy Fraser, all doing great jobs over the weekend. Hunter with a podium finish and almost looked like a double podium for him with a few engine problems in, in race two. Uh, good qualifying from Hunter and uh, the maturity that we're seeing from Hunter this year is uh, tenfold over where he was 12 months ago and a much more solid start to the season for him. So very impressive by Hunter. You keep living that dream, mate, because you are putting in the effort big time and uh, everyone back here is proud of you. Then in USF 2000, uh, Billy and Peter, well, great job from both you boys too. Uh, Billy, good all-round effort, good qualifying, good car pace, being smart. Uh, you've got some pretty tough teammates there in ex exclusive motorsport in F2000, so uh, well done. Peter, well, had a bit of a mixed weekend, really, with a, a, got involved in an accident in the first race, but this is part of the learning process of what makes Road to Indy such a successful series, and... Uh, you know, for both these boys from New Zealand, they'd never raced on a street circuit before, so it was a bit of an eye-opener for them being surrounded by concrete walls and things like that. So big learning curve. They've got a week off now when IndyCar goes to Texas, and uh, they'll move on and rejoin the group at uh, the road course at Indianapolis Motor Speedway before moving to the smaller oval out at Raceway Park all in the month of May, so they'll have their first taste of the oval. So, yeah, great effort from these New Zealand boys. If you're a New Zealand viewer, be very proud of what these guys are doing. It's a phenomenal job. Right, as I said, I'm turning the attentions now to uh, the main game and IndyCar itself qualifying. Well, Colton Herter really, he dominated qualifying in, in many ways and uh, put in an amazing lap time. Uh, Jack Harvey joined him on the front row. Joseph Newgarden back up there as well. Dixon had some good times, good good pace, had a, a bit of a spin which caused a local yellow which nullified the, the time that he set uh, for his best lap so he had to default back to the next best lap so that hurt him a little bit and pushed him down the field a little bit. Will Power was another one to uh, have some issues in qualifying so uh, you know these guys are all pushing hard. We're starting to see this new generation uh, really make their mark in, in many ways um, and it, it was a uh, an interesting but very demanding qualifying period, uh, you know, just totally dominated really by Colton Herder, who seemed to really get it together this weekend. Uh, but all in all, very good. Very hard around this uh, temporary street course. I, I've been there a couple of times. It's a very narrow canyon of a, a track around the back, and then you've got this wide, almost four wide aspect down the, the airport runway. So. A lot of things that happened there for the, for the guys. But overall, qualifying was one thing, but race is another, and that's where you score the big points. Well, to the race itself, uh, Monday morning New Zealand time or Sunday afternoon if you were in the US, and uh, another outstanding race, very, very demanding, very humid. A lot of drivers uh, commenting about how humid it was and how physically demanding it is. It's a demanding track anyway because of the nature of the street course that it is and those unrelentless turns around the backside of the circuit. But once again, it was Colton Herter, dominated qualifying, dominated the race, uh, led virtually every lap of the race other than the out-of-phase pit stop sequences. So really solid performance from him. Uh, Joseph Newgarden was to comment the fact that he kind of had him, had him at times and then didn't but played the long game after scoring no points at the opening round at Barber. So all in all, pretty good. For um, Alex Palau, it was a 17th place finish, which, you know, after his win at Barber was maybe a little bit of a disappointment. However, there's still points on the board, and that's that's a big thing that count. 
Jimmy Johnson, well, he had a bit of a mixed bag. He found the wall a couple of times, and I think probably St. Pete, again, was a, a reality check for Jimmy about how demanding this transition from the NASCAR Cup car to an, an Indy car really is for him as well. But this is part of the learning process. He's with a great team. They'll analyse that. As I've heard from many people, the work ethic from Jimmy is phenomenal, and you can guarantee that come the Indianapolis Motor Speedway road course, in just a few weeks' time, he'll be back out there, and I think we'll see a strong performance from him around there. So the top three, anyway, for the, the race at uh, St. Pete were Colton Herter, Joseph Newgarden, Simon Pagano, followed by Jack Harvey, and then Dixon. So once again, Dixie's still you know, in amongst the mix, and uh, we had three caution periods, which were all a result of the things that I've just mentioned. But overall, in the points race now, Alex Plough still leads with 67 points. This is where it gets a little bit interesting. Will Power and Dixon tied on 65. Herta leapfrogs up to 62. Pagano's there on 54. Then Harvey, Bourdais and VK are all on 51. Ericsson is on 50. And Joseph Newgarden coming in on 47. So it's constituted itself up, which you'd expect. And this is the time of the year, only two races in, doubleheader at Texas this weekend, where we could probably expect some interesting things to, to come out of that. Big thing is you must score points. I don't know how many times I've said that before. This is a championship about scoring points. And, uh, you know, somewhere along the line, maybe you won't, but somewhere along the line, you've got to, and you've got to score big. So a new feature that we've got here in, in Racing World is we've had their chance courtesy of our friends at uh, IndyCar who have helped us out a lot on this to talk to various drivers so I thought what better way to start it out than with the Kiwi rookie who was also the highest placed rookie of the race in 11th position Scott McLaughlin. Yeah overall good day for our Dex, uh, Dex Imaging Chevy it was, uh, it was it was a full on race very hot very humid one of the most physical races I've ever done but um, solid race from our end uh, I, I was probably a little bit too safe at the start um, just trying to keep my front wing on. It was pretty forceful out there and a lot of the veterans around me were you know, probably just using a bit more of ex their experience on colder tyres and stuff like that. But we got around the first stint and we pitted in the right time and we, actually, we were actually on a very alternate strategy that could have almost put us in, in the lead. So um, unfortunately there was, there was a couple of spinners at the, towards the middle of that race and, and our team reacted and, and we pitted and we did the right thing on our strategy but unfortunately there was no yellow and and um, we didn't use the, the speed that we had in the clear air to really get going. But um, look, it's uh, it, for me right now, it's continuously finishing races to finish in P11. That's a great run for us. And um, yeah, we'll continue to build on that. And, and hopefully, uh, you know, come the end of the year, uh, we're bigger, better and stronger. But I have to thank Dex, uh, Dex Imaging for their support and, and uh, you know, excited for the next few races. Moving on from that rookie to another rookie, it was Roman Grosjean that had the chance to catch up with us. Hey guys, so first race uh, in some beat, uh, Don. We tried to play with the strategy starting a bit at the back today. Uh, we never really got lucky with the yellows, but I feel we did a good job this weekend. We've learned a lot in the race. Uh, very physical today, very hard, but the old team did a, a good job. And, you know, we're gonna keep working, keep improving, and uh, next one will be better. Be better. And what wouldn't be complete in our rookie trio than to hear from Jimmy Johnson himself. Exciting day for me here in St. Pete. Um, unfortunately, I, I made two mistakes on older tires. I feel the car losing some grip and, and being a little more difficult to drive, but I thought I could stay on top of it. And I uh, just got behind in the 13 and locked up the fronts. And then uh, had a really loose car through the high speed stuff and it got away from me in turn three. Uh, in both situations, I needed to put a new wing on the front, but I was able to get it back out and get going. Um, at different points, there certainly were some bright spots and the pace was there. But really putting together the run from old tires to old tires, uh, something I need to work on. But I had a blast here on my first street race. It is more physical and more difficult than uh, these drivers ever make it look. So it's huge credit to all of them and how easy they make this look. And of course, during the race, there was a little bit of a dust up between Graham Rohill and Alexander Rossi. Not a good weekend for Rossi. Two weekends in a row where it hasn't really gone that well. And here's what Alexander had to say after the race. Uh, disappointing day. Um, you know, I think we, we had a top five car, if not the podium, and um, Racy Beal down turn four with Graham. Obviously, it was, uh, it was close. Um, we got a puncture um, because of it, and that causes us to kind of both go into the wall in turn five. Um, so it was unfortunate that it hurt both of us. Um, yeah, tough day again. Uh, car car's really good. Um, I feel like we, we definitely deserve to be up there, but it wasn't meant to be. Congrats to Colton, and uh, we'll go back to it in uh, Texas next week.
And for Kiwi viewers again, uh, we had a, a, a colleague of ours from IndyCar in the pit lane straight after the race. They were helping us out gather all these interviews, which we're hoping we're going to be able to do on a regular basis for you from now on. So here's what Dixie had to say. Yeah, it's been okay. It's been a bit loud, to be honest. Uh, you know, I think Barbara, we did a great job as a team and got uh, very good points for, for a lot of us. Uh, here we seem to be a little bit off. The car was, you know, hard to get in, in a very uh, good window and comfortable one. And even in the race, you know, kind of struggled a bit with... Uh, outright pace i feel like we were slightly better than other cars at different points um nothing really happened in the pit stop exchange which i expected apart from you know rossi and ray all getting into it which uh, definitely helped our position at the end but uh yeah got caught out on the outside there on the start that dropped us back a couple so it was uh, definitely tough from that point on but uh the guys in the pits can see how this uh just did a good job and you know, that was it and finally rounding it out just some comments here from joseph newgarden and race winner Colton herter um for me like I felt pretty good in the car physically, but I was really, I was pretty hot. Like this morning I was really, really warm. And so probably not acclimated as, as well to the heat right now, but um, yeah, that was the biggest thing for me. I thought it was really humid today and, you know, temperature wise, it wasn't that hot. I think, you know, about 80 degrees, that's not really that tough, but when you add 90% humidity, you know, it, it definitely changes the effect. So you got to make sure you're hydrated really well and you're not overheating. Um, Cause you know, Physical exhaustion is one thing, but then heat exhaustion is a different one. But um, yeah, that was what's made it tough. But you know, it's funny. We always, <laughs> I got through warm up, and I'm like, man, this is gonna be a really hard day. And then you get into the race, and you're like, you know what? It's gonna be fine. And you end up getting through it just fine, as always. I don't know about Simon though. He looked pretty worn out. So um, you know, I'm worried about him for for a couple of events. <laughs> I'm messing with him. <laughs> That's actually quite interesting because I I noticed Colton laying down, and Joseph was next to him pouring water on his face. So I felt fantastic. I mean, obviously my fitness program, and I'm being serious, is much better than Joseph's. And uh, I must say, I have a lot of confidence with it right now because I feel fresh and we could race again. Take that. <laughs> come on, come back. Oh, well, just look look at the lap times at the end. That tells the story to me for fitness. Well, yeah, look at the lap times <laughs> at the end. Exactly, exactly. We needed, you know, I was talking to my engineer. We really, coming into this weekend, we knew we needed to win. We needed to uh, hit the reset button. We needed a good good point swing for us, um, not only for the champ. Well, I mean, I guess mostly for the championship, but you had to think Texas is next week, and we were dead last in the points. Um, and so we were going to have to qualify early and go out there early. And probably not qualify super well so i'm super happy to get the win obviously because it's a win um but it'll put us up in the championship and that's going to make our lives that much easier in texas and that much easier going forward um for the rest of the season well the teams now move on to the double header at texas the high bank oval very different to say being at ims uh, we're going to see some great racing there most of the teams have tested at texas uh it's always a, a it's it's a big circuit you know you've got to be brave uh, it's not always a, a true high line. It'll sort itself out. Drafting is important. Pit stop strategy, a little bit different on, on the oval. You've got to stay in phase with people. You get out of phase and you'll pay the price. So double header this weekend at Texas under the lights uh, at the famed Texas Motor Speedway. So it's sure to be a, a great event. And then the teams head to the road course at Indianapolis and the month of May starts with the countdown to the 105th running of the Indy 500. Now, as we were saying earlier on about drivers coming through the ranks and our surge of uh, young Kiwis that are in the road to Indy Series this year, one thing they all have in common, and this includes Scott Dixon, uh, is Formula Ford. It was a, a breeding ground in New Zealand for many years, along with Formula First or Formula V as it was known then. But Formula Ford is really making quite a resurgence at the moment. And we're seeing a great young crop of drivers come through there. Many of them may even end up being in the academy this year not giving anything away right now. But the thing about it is that Formula Ford teaches racecraft. It teaches pure racecraft that it, sometimes you can't get in a tin top racing car. And uh, so what I thought I'd do, and we're gonna start this as a little bit of a regular segment uh, within Racing World, is we're gonna deep, deep into our personal archive, which we've got from our very own little vault that we've got. Uh, this is courtesy of my days at TVNZ when I was producer of motorsport there. And this is the very first Formula Ford race held at the Supercar Weekend in 2001. So it was the very first race of the weekend, actually, on a green track uh, for Formula Ford. Have a look at some of the names in there. And if I said people like Coulthard, Nick Ross, Johnny Reed, 
there's a few more in there as well so enjoy this this is from the racing world archive 30 second board coming across so hopefully fingers crossed toes crossed everything ready for a good clean start this time the race is over 10 laps it's part of the karcher support series and it's round one of eight in the tallies formula ford national championship here goes the five second board 10 laps here at pukako brady kennett former new zealand grand prix winner sits on pole waiting for the start the engine revs right up there oh, at the red and Kennett's Kennett got a flyer. And Kennett's up alongside the inside of him. Kenny Smith shuffle back one there. Simon There's Gamble, another good start for him. Remember, he was the one that uh, got uh, penalised the most again for the uh, abortion in the first start, because, or the abortive start, I should say, because he was well clear. Great start from about row number three, but it is Fabian Coulthard. Now, we mentioned that Simon Richards is in a brand new car. Well, Fabian Coulthard is also in a brand new car. Very, very important to get um, get that start to get out of the mischief, but they've got safely through the uh, the boost mobile aces and down the big long back straight, but look at Coulthard. He's really relishing here in the condensed at Booker Cove, but the press coming on him around the outside. Here's Brady Kennett. Been around this task for a long time, and there he gets shuffled back another one. There's Nick Ross in the Pertec car. Comes up the oh, inside, turns Coulthard there. around, and well. that's, I would say that's taken uh, taken Coulthard out of it, that's for sure, and possibly Nick Ross well with maybe some front suspension damage. This happened hasn't been kind to Nick Ross in the past. A single or two ago, he was upside down in amongst that, but you can see how things change, but the pressure now has come right off our race leader at the moment. Coulthard still leads as they come round to complete the first of two, but there's Nick Ross we can see in the background coming up into fourth position already. Here it is on the replay. You see there, Brady Kennett just gets a tap. I think he spins right round. Nick Ross jumps the leap frogs him. Here it is from a different angle. The car in the front is Kennett coming up the inside of him. I think there was a tap there. I don't want to be judge, jury and executioner, but I'm sure there was a tap there for Brady Kennett to turn him round. But the advantage stays with Fabian Coulthard out on the front. As I said, this is a brand new stealth for the Erotica team. Once again, up until uh, yesterday's practice session, had not turned a wheel in anger in New Zealand. So uh, Fabian Coulthard, his second, well, I guess two and a half seasons in Formula Fords, he finished... Uh going on down here. Well, that's that's a question of uh, something wasn't engaged before the uh, the brake pedal was applied. But there's a good position there, just gone straight out the door. I think that might have been Johnny Reed that was doing that. But here's Nick Ross in the Pertec car now. Here's our race leader Fabian Coulthard from Auckland, doing a great job. No pressure on him, but just keep an eye on Nick Ross. Phil, he's a real hard charger. But these two have got to be very careful that they don't get involved in, in a race amongst themselves and allow the gap to get on the back of them. Two laps down and eight laps to go. But look at the scrap there. Simon Gamble in the uh, in the DeWalt car and uh, Simon Richards in there. Of course, he's got Father Steve overseeing the operation there. Steve Richards, a former very successful former Atlantic driver here. And it's great to see the father-son combinations working together as a team. We've seen it on soccer fields during the school days. Well, that's a little bit different to what we're doing here, but certainly a great drive coming from Simon Gamble. So three of ten, and it's been action-packed all the way in the Formula Fords. Gamble there, that car's got a bit of a history. It's the ex-Ashley Stitchbury car, and it's the ex-Bertie uh, car, the car that the uh, the Formula One uh, star drove when he was racing Formula Four here in New Zealand. Look at the positions changing places. They come down into the braking area for the Holden hairpin once again. Chris Pith has made a great start from the back of the field. Had massive problems for him in the warm-up session. They blew a gearbox. They broke the main shaft in the gearbox, and uh, they have struggled a wee bit, the AMP team. But while all this is happening behind him, Fabian Coulthard is just building up a bit of a lead. Gamble in second, then it's Richards, then it looks like it's uh, Nelson Hartley up there as well. So too is um, Kenny Smith, but he's, uh, he's not where he wants to be. Kenny's a guy that likes to race and likes to race hard all the time. And at the moment, he is further down. He's probably back in about, uh, I would think, eighth or ninth place. Number 12 there, Daniel Gaunt, out of Auckland, out of the uh, John Crawford stable in years past, but now uh, joined forces with the, uh, the Smith Hartley concern doing quite well. So this is a battle for second, third, fourth and fifth. We're watching it. Remember, further up the Cougar uh, back straightaway is Fabian Coulthard in the clean air and doing it nicely at the front of the field. Well, we've got to remember, Phil, in this class, it's, um, there's quite a number of drivers that are not even 15 years of age. They're in their 13s, 14s and 15s. And, and this is really tremendous stuff. Simon Gamble now coming under a little pressure there. Simon Richards there, tucked in behind him, round through the Holden hairpin again. Superb drive coming there from uh, young Nelson Hartley there in uh, car number 10. It's from 
Palmerston North, the youngster there. It's his second, I think, maybe even third season in Formula Ford. But again, his father, Brian, a former uh, top mini seven racer, Formula Holden racer. He's driven a lot of cars during his career. But uh, you can see now that they're starting to look into this slipstream. We've got uh, the best part of five cars climbing all over each other. And they've got to be very, very careful not to tag them. But look at this. Simon Richards in the Caltex Haviland car has gone through and he's taken Hartley with him. Simon Gamble in the Devolt entry gets uh, shuffled back a couple in that pack. So certainly the pressure and at the tail of it, there's, uh, there's Ken Smith, former New Zealand Grand Prix winner and Gold Star champion, and still mixing it in here with the youngsters. And of course, Kenny Smith, the man who's been so largely responsible to really drop kick Scott Dixon's career off and also Matthew Halliday's as well. So as you say, the elder statesman of New Zealand motorsport, Kenny Smith stands alone on the podium with that one. Oh, look at the scrap for the miners. Nelson Hartley's not going to give it up without a fight. What a difference the season makes. This kid's grown about a foot in uh, in height, and he's grown about a, another leg, I think, in confidence. He really has been a sensation in the Manfield Winter Series. And, uh, well, as we said before, another one that's come through karting. The man in front of him, Simon Richards, also from the karting uh, learning academy, if you like. Simon Gamble in there as well. Chris Piff is starting to make a move further down through the field. But as we keep saying to you, while this action funnels out behind him, Fabian Coulthard looking very, very comfortable at the front of the field. Now, Coulthard's an interesting uh, scenario. He told me when he started his Formula Ford career, he wasn't out there to come second. He wanted to win. If he couldn't win the national championship in his first time, he would win it this time. He's had a bet with his dad about that and his sponsors as well, the Erotica uh, Lifestyles Expo. And he said this championship, the 2001-2002 championship, is going to belong to Fabian Coulthard. He's got all the confidence in the world. And you can see for yourself, he's got all the talent in the world as well. As he works his way through the uh, Allied Finance, Kink. The battle for second and third hots up. Look at Hartley. He dives one side, then the other. Simon Richards has a quick look in the mirrors. He sees it coming into the braking area for the hairpin. This is where it all went wrong for them in lap number two. Gamble there as well. Oh, Pitha caught on the outside. Probably cost him a spot or two as they work their way down towards Ford Mountain once again. We're well past half distance in this 10 lap race and it is, looks like it's going to fall into the hands of Fabian Coulthard. But what about the battle for second, third and fourth? Well, it's certainly a tremendous effort going on here. I mean, Nick Ross sitting up there in second position and he's He's actually been very lucky to get away with um, with that tag that it's you know it hasn't been something in that car but he's soldiering on but you see Simon Richards here in the Caltex Haviland car gets a little bit of a, a gap on them as they come out of the Holden Heppen and up towards the top of the Ford Mountain but then um, he's right back on the back of him I mean Nelson Hartley is doing a tremendous job I mean the maturity from this young man in only his second season of Formula Ford racing but it's like riding a horse riding a push bike you've got to keep on him on him on him the whole time and he's done that Manfield Winter Series that the um, Manfield promotions are put together so successfully over many, many years, and it really has been another fantastic training ground for our Formula 4 drivers. It's just mileage, mileage all the time, and it's really showing what a mature young fellow that... Um Oh, and round goes another one. Just got a glimpse of it, I think. It, oh, no, it was uh, Carl Wilson from Wellington in the race tech, Van Diemen. That's bad news for Carl. He's another one that's uh, having his second full season in Formula Fords. And yet again, I know I harp on about it. Another one that's come from karting. Look at this. Hartley's getting ready to pounce, but he's running out of laps to do it. Have a look on the replay here. You'll just see a glimpse of the yellow car flashing by. That is Carl Wilson. And really, BL, I think he just got a bit hard on the brake there. He did it all on his own. I think he was. You know, when you get the pressure on it, it lightens up the back end of the car. And when you're turning it in, you get a leg. On the, on the dirt as well and bang it was all over by the shouting look at Hartley just stalking Simon Richards now Mark Haswell sitting right in behind them he's ready to pounce should these two make a mistake remember out in the front it's still cool town but this is where the action is and that's what one sports bring for second and third in the Formula Fords Richards and Hartley Hartley looking one way then the other up the long back straight here can he get close enough to make the pass stick this time round filled with the car of Nelson Hartley. Are the mirrors on Simon Richards' car? Into the Holden Hip and they come once again nice and tidy for the front runners. See, this is where Richards gets a bit of a gap on him, but you wait till they get over the top of the Ford Mountain, you'll see that um, Hartley will start and close in on him again. He's got really good corner speed there, there's no question of that, although the gap is a little bit a little bit um, bigger this time, but still it's uh, Fabian Coulthard out in front in the erotica entry doing a tremendous job. Nick Ross in the Pertex car, soldiers along in second position. Uh, Coulthard's too far ahead to catch him. These guys are not too far behind to catch him, but as the race goes into its closing stages, lap nine of ten. But 
but certainly this is where all the action is centered here on three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and tenth place. Tremendous stuff. There's Kenny Smith in the uh, Monaco entry. Well, you can see just when they uh, they start to get into the S's and they don't quite get the corners quite uh, as precise as they'd like to, the gaps close right up. That's what's happened further down through the field. This guy, though, has already put a lap on young Matthew Radisic. It's going to be a very, very steep learning curve for Matt Radisic. There he is there in the McDonald's uh, spectrum, just sitting there in behind uh, Coulthard at the moment. He's one that hasn't come from karting. He's come from a dirt background up at Western Springs. He raced a very successful uh, quarter midget campaign. But this race is going to be very successful for this man because he'll come down, he'll see the checkered flag first. This is Auckland's Fabian Coulthard in a brand new Van Diemen Stealth. What a way to christen the new car. He wins it and wins it well. Second place coming through the Pertec car and on, oh sorry, one to go. I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself here. Never was, uh, math was in the specialty at school, you can tell that. So. Coulthard goes for the first time today. Comes out of the boost S's and into the back straight, and he hasn't put a foot wrong. He's been so smooth, he's totally unruffled out of the whole lot. Uh, that little debacle that was going on down at the hairpin, kept his nose clean out of it, grabbed second gear, and he was gone. And he's, but he still kept himself under pressure, keeping the pace on. He's obviously keeping a real good look in his mirrors. Other to back off and think I've got this thing gone. That's you talk to a lot of drivers, and they say, look, honestly, you do start to lose concentration when you back off and take the pressure off yourself. Nick Ross in the Pertec car still in second position but that's a very bold statement for a young man to say that this year this championship is mine and don't um, don't be fooled by the fact that he just took the bet with his father is that he's very very serious about it over the top of the Ford Mountain Phil and this, this time I'll get it right Bill the checkered flag comes out this time for Fabian Coulthard he wins it Nick Ross will be second and the last time we looked it was Simon Richards but can Hartley do anything about it I don't think he can there is Nick Ross crosses the line next car should be the Havilene car of Simon Richards and well Mark Hazel got up right at the very death of that one and maybe just might have pipped um, Nelson Hartley. We'll have to check on that on the official uh, results for you. But this man, the winner, puts the first race of the 2001-2002 Tallies Formula Ford Championship firmly under the belt and maximum points in this eight-round series for Fabian Coulthard, a second cousin of David Coulthard. Boy, oh boy, if he, uh, well, if he can emulate what his uh, second cousin has done, he has got a very bright future indeed. So 66 from 14, and some talk at the moment over third. Was it Richards or was it Mark Haswell? We will check it, and we think it was probably Simon Richards. So great racing in the Formula Fords. Lots more to come as the boys go through onto their warm-up, uh, their warm-down lap, I should say. Um, Coulthard's margin, 5.26 seconds. That's a very good one, Phil. He was right, he was good right from the word go when the time he ended it. Here's the uh, the results of the Karcher support race number one, Formula Fords, Fabian Coulthard from Auckland and a Van Diemen from Hamilton's Nick Ross and Simon Richards also from the Waikato taking out third position. Tremendous stuff and a great way to start our, uh, our Boost Mobile weekend here at Fugger Kelly. Well, hope you enjoyed that look back at... Uh, the racing from Pukekohe that year, isn't it interesting to see Pukekohe without a bridge for those of you who uh, go out there more often now. And that was from 2001, the very first supercar event. I was uh, very privileged to be the producer of that event during my time at TVNZ. And we're going to have more from our archive, including touring car racing or a whole raft of things. Now that I've found uh, this collection of stuff and they come courtesy of this good old thing. It's called uh, VHS. So we might remember those. So we're starting to... Uh, duplicate a few of things cross to a files for you and you'll be able to see those in the coming weeks so hope you enjoyed the show again a little bit of a abbreviated show today seeing as i'm by myself next week i'll have some friends with me again as we look at the third round of the ntt indycar series from the texas motor speedway along with a feast of other global motorsport and local motorsport as well until then stay safe perspective group is a leading media production company based in auckland new zealand Established in 2009 by former TVNZ producer David Turner, Perspective Group offers you a vast arrangement of media options to fit any size or budget. It covers truly global services supported by some of New Zealand's leading media talents. For more information, contact Perspective Group Limited at perspectivegroupltd at gmail.com and check out the website perspectivegroupltd.com where you'll find even more information on creating your media solutions. Racing World is presented by Race Control Magazine.